Hi everyone, welcome to my next video in the micro front end series. In this video, I'm going to be talking about web workers. Now I am using module federation and react for my videos, but if you like the content, please like, and subscribe to the videos for more future micro front end uh, videos coming in the series. Web workers are an interesting use case in uh, the micro front end or module federation world. Uh, the main reason why is when you look at the documentation, the first thing that kind of jumps out, um, just to give a, a quick recap uh, on what a web worker is, just if you're not familiar with it, but it's a way to run scripts and background threads. Um, so web workers use events to, to communicate, and the main restriction and, and why it's interesting for micro front ends is that it has a restriction where it needs to run on the same origin so if you look here, it says as long as these workers are hosted with the same origin as the parent page. So if you have a shell or a host application, you know, running on mydomain.com and you had another micro front end that's maybe coming from, let's say, a CDN, those domains are different. So if that micro front end created a worker, tried to load that worker, the origin portion of the uh, the web worker protection within your browser would reject it, right? It would see the, the difference in origins and it wouldn't allow you to load it. There is a pretty interesting hack of how you can actually load a web worker uh, still using micro front ends, and that's what we're gonna show today. So on the screen here, I have a NPM package called cross origin worker. If you go into uh, the repository for this, you can actually see the code for it. it's really simple. Um, it, it's basically doing some, some magic with how these scripts are loaded. Um, before we jump into this, let's look at the page real quick for the package here. Um, so essentially, if you aren't using this package and you have that scenario I just explained, you'll see this kind of uh, uh, you know fail to construct message because of this origin uh, difference here. So. If you're using this package, what you can do is you can actually take in a um, URL uh, and then it will take this URL and this is uh, where your micro front end would be serving it from, not you know the consumer. Uh, and it'll make it into a friendly URL that you can use on the consumer. Um, so if you look at the code here, um, this is basically all of the package. And what it's doing is it's taking it and doing a uh, uh, URI encoding on it, and then it's accessing it um, as kind of a, a URL, uh, an object URL here. So the, the code here, this is literally the entire package. So it's very small. You could obviously come here and you could tweak it or, or do what you would want to do with it. I'm just using the package directly for reference. Well, let's go ahead and build one. So I'm using my NX uh, mono repo that I've been using in my previous videos here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go into um, go into my project, and you want to make sure you have the uh, cross origin worker package installed. Um, I'm also using the copy webpack plugin uh, package as well. The main reason why is for this worker, I'm just going to be using plain JavaScript. Uh, if you are using TypeScript for the worker, it's just going to be a little extra effort where you have to compile down that file, um, and you just would serve that form, right? You wouldn't use the TypeScript file directly. I'm just using a, a plain JavaScript one just for an example. I'll be serving this from my hero micro front end here. So if I go in and I go to one of my components here, which is my product hero, I'm going to add a button to my product hero in order to send an event to the web worker and it's going to you know process it. It'll basically just console log it, but just as an example to kind of show. So I have a utils folder here. I'm going to start here and I'm going to uh, create a file called create worker uh, TX. And I'm going to basically say we're going to make this a function. And we're actually just going to take a URL in as a string. Um, and then we are going to actually import this uh, NPM package here. So um, it's going to be called actually it's a, the default. Uh, get, get cross origin URL, uh, worker URL, and it's asynchronous. So we're going to make this return a promise and we're going to say local URL equals this. We're going to pass it our URL. And then from here, we're really just going to create the worker. So, um, with the worker, 
in place here. We could actually just return this. We don't actually need it locally. Um, and that's all this script is going to do. So it's going to use the package. It's going to pass our URL in. It's going to get a kind of local safe URL back and it's going to load the worker from that URL. So with this in place here, we actually need to go consume it. So now we have, well, actually let's, let's create the worker first as well. Um, so in the worker here, basically we're just going to reference uh, self here and we're going to subscribe to the messages. So we're just going to say event and, uh, well, actually, sorry, this is a, and we'll just console log, uh, event data. And this is the entire worker. So, um, you could go read the documentation on web workers if you want to read about how uh, it's access to things like the window object and stuff varies. Um, not really kind of in scope for this video, but uh, this is just basically setting a handler for on message events. So now we have to go consume the web worker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the use effect hook here. And I'm actually going to use, I'm going to use uh, state and uh, not, I don't know if you necessarily need to do it this way. It's an asynchronous function, and I think you could probably rewrite this to be synchronous. So um, this would kind of be my uh, quick interpretation of, of how to use it. Um, I would you know, make a function in here called load worker. We'll make sure this just runs a single time. We'll call load worker. And uh, we really just want to you know, set the worker in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the uh, create worker script and the URL we're going to pass it here. And this is the interesting part is going to be webpack underscore public underscore path. And uh, I'll just append on this um, uh, worker JS here. And you'll notice that there's no type available for this. If you want to declare a type for it, you could say, um, you know, global, and then you can add a, uh, a string property for it. it. This is this is in the Webpack documentation, and by default, most of the time you're probably going to be setting this to auto. Um, and this will always represent the URL in the micro front end, uh, not the consumer. So if you try to use something like um, document, you know, current script as an example, this doesn't work with something like the Webpack loader, which is happening in Module Federation. So you can't rely on that. So you want to use webpack public path here, and that's actually going to create. Um, so say worker here. That's actually going to create the the full URL. So at this point, we can go in and we could just say, you know, set worker. Um, let's see here. So this is a promise. We're just going to await it. Now we have the worker, um, and then we'll handle it here. So we'll say like, if we don't have a uh, worker, then we'll just return an empty fragment just for simplicity. Um, you know, there's could use suspense, you could do different things like that, but this is just kind of going through it quickly. Uh, use on click and we're just going to, yeah, we're going to post a message here um, to the worker and we're just going to type in a message, right? So at this point, we've got a simple hook to go and create the worker, load the worker. Um, it keeps an instance to it in state, nothing you know, super fancy here, and then a click event to interface with the worker. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our Webpack config here, and we're gonna uh, pull the copy plugin out, or sorry, we'll import it, um, copy plugin. And we're gonna go down here, and I'm using NX, so my, my um, configuration here is gonna look a little different, but it's kind of the same thing. And I'll just paste this, what I have here. And this is basically just adding the copy plugin and saying, hey, copy this worker file to the output. You know, don't actually compile it. So I'm not using, you know, TSC or Babel or anything like that. I'm just pushing the file over. Um, obviously, if you need to compile it, you can compile it. Um, it's a little extra, you know, complexity in this setup. So I'm just kind of um, showing the concept of getting around the cross origin issue and using the actual file. So at this point, if we come in and we serve the um, host application, it'll launch the remote as well. We'll load the host. And I'll come in and I'll look at my console here. And if I click on this 
t-shirt, you'll see it'll be logging to the console here. And if we look at the network traffic, I'll just go ahead and reload it here just to show. So it goes and it loads the web worker from the other origin, right? So we're on 4,200, it's loading from 3,100 to get the web worker. Now this should fail, but essentially what's happening is it's creating this object URL and referencing it as this kind of encoded object here to load the script. So this is kind of bypassing that restriction and it's allowing you to take that web worker from your federated module and execute it and run it in the consumer um, as you would expect. So that covers pretty much everything in the video. If you're using web workers for module federation, um, I'd love to hear what kind of challenges you've run into. Um, sometimes just the, the TypeScript portion of it can be a challenge, just you know, compiling it down, um, you know, making it kind of friendly for the web. Um, and again, those are, those are pretty simple tasks to do, but it doesn't necessarily work as well with Webpack right out of the box. Um, there are some, some challenges there. But if you've enjoyed the video, again, pre please like and subscribe. In future videos, I'll be covering more micro front-end content. Thank you.